honors literature class, and they had a, a, a major project at the, at the end of, uh, it's an English class, and um, I am sort of loose with their assignments, and Hannah was one of the individuals who decided on a non-traditional uh, uh, piece. Uh, we were taking a look at the Canterbury Tales. Hannah became very taken with the wife of Bath and showed up with this on the day the project was due. After I got over my delight and big belly laugh, I asked her to talk about it to the class, which she did. And there was attached to this a major writing component that goes with it. I am honored to present Hannah Leonard and the wife of Bath Sandwich. Thank you so much. Um, well, first I want to start off with, they tell you um, to do what you know how to do, and what I know how to do is eat food. So I was like, okay, let me do something that involves that. Well, I was taken with the wife of Bath because she's so scandalous, and she, you know, she's so different. I just loved her. And I want you to think about a man and a woman. You think about man and woman, you think about the man as the breadwinner, you know, the house holder. He is the dominator, and the woman as the backbone, the supportive backbone, and the person who is the homemaker. Well, the wife of Bath, as you can tell, is not that woman that I just portrayed at all. She is very powerful, and she uses men to get power where a man would use a woman for himself and gain power. So I decided to create this sandwich because the wife of Bath, she compares women to loaves of bread. Um, if you've read the Canterbury Tales, she compares them to loaves of bread. So the young, youthful um, virgin women are white bread, very pure, expensive breads. And the been around the block women, you know, the ones who've been there, kind of done that, they are the heartier grain breads, the, one, the brown breads, you know, the ones that are cheaper and not, you know, not something that you really want to put with peanut butter. So I was like, okay, wow, I really like that symbolism that she uses. And I was like, let me look into this. And I looked at the sandwich. It turns out the sandwich, yes, created by Earl of Sandwich is a European man. So I was like, okay, cool, more correlation. Um, and I looked even further. The sandwich actually was super controversial when it was first developed because it defied the normal like logic of how a meal was supposed to be prepared. You know, this is an on-the-go, something to eat with your hands. And it defied all normal food anatomy. And I was like, wow, this is the wife of Bath. She defies all traditional anatomy between a man and a woman. And the bread she also used to connect it with refreshment. Um, she says that this is a refreshing thing, that bread provides um, sexual refreshment and that it's used something as something to uh, keep men going, you know, when they you know, they, you know. Um, so I was like, wow, this is so great. So I created this sandwich um, to represent the wife of Bath. Obviously, the bread here is the wife of Bath, and it's part of your grain bread because, as you all know, she is definitely a crazy, crazy scandalous woman. So on each piece, I have put a collage of pictures that represent each ingredient and what they stand for. This is the bread, and on it I have symbols of feminism and women empowerment. This is the symbol for um, feminism, and I also included pictures of the wife of Bath, which you would see uh, on the piece of bread that I sent around, because I wanted you guys to see the voluptuous sensuality of the wife of Bath, and how she really used herself to get ahead. So this is essentially the first layer and what kind of holds everything together. Well, next we have meat. Obviously, I bet you can stand, guess what this stands for. This is men. <laughs> men is meat. And I just wanted to incorporate the stereotypical man, what man is supposed to represent, you know, all things money, power, dirty, facial hair, you know, what men do. And to really get the point across of like, this is man. Okay, so this sits on top of the wife of that. Next, I decided to incorporate cheese because I myself love cheese. And as you can see, this is age. And not only does she use men for power, she also utilizes age of men for power. So she, in her endeavors, she has lots of lovers, um, age ranging from 
super young to super old. And the age is what is really important because youthful men are good for sex. And she's also very concerned about sexual prowess and power. And that's what really gives her, you know, freshness and youth in herself. Whereas the older men, they are the ones who give her the power and the monetary control. And she still enjoys sex on the side, you know. That's what she does. So that goes on top of men. Next I have the lettuce. This represents the natural order of domestication in a traditional household. This is a collage of, you know, the woman in the apron fixing dinner for her husband who's just come home from a long day of work making money to feed the children and to feed his wife. And this is something that, on top of men and age, that is super important in the 15th century European culture, still today these norms exist. So this sits on top of men and age because this is, you know, the middle piece that holds the family together. Next, I have the tomato. And to me, anyways, the tomato represents refreshingness and vitality and fresh. This is something that is juicy and delicious, just like the wife of Bath's sexual life. And really, sex is something that you can't get around when you talk about the wife of Bath because she uses her sexuality to really get what she wants. You know, she's a very powerful woman. And the tomato is this idea of sexuality and sensuality and something so beautiful that she uses. You know, instead of just for monogamy, you know, between a man and a woman, she realizes, no, you know, this is my choice. I'm going to use this for other things, for myself only. And then last but not least, we have the onion. And this represents the sour opinions that come along with um, being different and not being what society says you are. And so I just wanted to include that because it's important to realize that when you do something against the grain, you know, you're going to have people who don't agree with you. And the wife of Bath is so strong, and she's not really concerned with what other people have to say. She says, you know what, I have this goal, and I'm doing it for myself and not for anybody else. And I thought it was so powerful. It's such a great message. Um, and then, I'll that for just one second. And then, of course, um, those opinions, you know, they're meant to push her back down and keep her within culture. And she doesn't let it happen. And in the end, she quite literally comes back on top. And so, you know, she's on top and on bottom because she is the real powerhouse. And then, with any good sandwich, <laughs> there is a toothpick. You know, you got to keep all the meat together. And on this toothpick, I wrote one of my favorite and one of the most crucial points, I think, from The Wife of Bath's Tale. It says, my lady and my love, my dear wife too, I place myself in your wise governance. Choose for yourself whichever's the most pleasant, most honorable to you and me also. All's one to me, choose either of the two. What pleases you is good enough for me. And for those of you who don't, aren't super familiar, this is the moment when the knight, um, he has got himself into some trouble with a lady previously. And so the queen gives him the opportunity to get out of trouble if he goes out and seeks what it is that a woman really wants in life. And this is the scene where he actually goes to a woman and he's asking, what is it that you want? And she says, sovereignty over man. And sovereignty over man just means power. You know, selfness. You know, this is me being me, not owned by anybody else. And that's why I thought this was so important, this, um, this quote and this part of the story, because this is the real moment where you see like the wife of Bath really like sticking it to him. That's why, you know what I mean? Quite literally, the toothpick sticking it to him. <laughs> and this just goes in here. Sorry, give me a second. Like this. And now we have completed the sandwich. And you know what, I love this sandwich because, and I love the wife of Bath because by being so different and everything that the culture is not, I think that she represents the culture so well because she really points out the true colors of the European culture because it's so different. And I don't know, I just love her so much. And thank you guys for looking at my crazy project. Um, I'll open you guys up to the questions if you have any, but thank you so much. <laughs> Honestly, okay, so I had been, originally, I was going to do something completely different, and then we started 
the reading, we read Agamemnon, and I was like really taken with Clytemnestra, and I was like, okay, she's really crazy, like, let me do something with her. And I really liked this whole, like, women empowered thing. I was like, wow, this is awesome, especially in such early literature, you know, when these are real early figureheads for women empowered. And then we went on to read the Canterbury Tales, and then the wife of Bath was introduced, and so I was like, okay, um, is there something I can do between these two powerhouse women? Like, is there something that connects them? And then it started to get too much, so I kind of dropped that idea. And one day, I was actually walking around Walmart trying to like figure out what I wanted to do, and I was really hungry. And I was like, gosh, I just, you know, what if I did something with food? And that was honestly my inspiration, was <laughs> literally being hungry, like, I'm not kidding. Like, and I just came up with this idea, and I love to make collages. It's something I've been doing in my projects since I was in elementary school, and I've always loved to do projects, and that's why when we said non-traditional project, I was so excited, because I've written a lot of papers in my day, and so I was ready for something different. And, but really, honestly, it was just hunger, and then the symbolism started to line up, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, why has this never been done before? So I just, that's sort of where it comes from, nothing super crazy, I just came up with this idea, developed it in my head, and then just went with it. And it worked out really well, honestly. Um, so I'm so happy with the turnout of it. Any other questions? So I didn't, I haven't touched one, but what is the collage actually on? Like, um, okay, good question. This actually, here, I'll let you touch it. Oh, thank you. This actually took me quite a long time <laughs> to produce. I hand cut out each piece from styrofoam, um, styrofoam pieces, and then I have two layers of paper mache under it. And then on top of that, I did it's like a Mod Podge glue, and I hand picked each picture. Like each peach, uh, picture has its own little story, and I'll leave it for you guys to look at um, and get a better picture. Like it, 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 it really, a lot of thought went into this, and so I Mod Podge each picture onto its 360. Um, and then it was it was all white, and I was like, oh, this is kind of, you can't tell that it's a sandwich. <laughs> so I hand painted everything and the colors that the food is. And then on top of it, because I used watercolor, I didn't want it to rub off. So I did like a, um, a gloss, a paint gloss on top of it to hold everything together. And that process in all took about a month and a half to do. Um, it was a really long, tedious process, but it was so worth it in the end. And I really love the turnout of it. But it took quite some time, and I did all of it myself by hand. <laughs> Other questions for Anna? 